Got dreams of being a professional podcaster, but have no idea what you're doing? This is impossible. That's about to change. A new kind of school. Welcome to the Pod School Podcast. Hello, fellow podcasters, and welcome to the show. Today, I'm going to be talking about something that I learned at a podcasting conference recently called OzPod here in Australia. It was in a presentation by a guy called Adam Jeffrey from Wavelength Creative. They're a podcast agency for brands, and he was talking about how to improve podcasting promotion. So for people that are already creating podcasts, if we're trying to find new audience and new listeners, which we are always trying to do, it's the constant battle of podcasting. He was giving some tips on how to do that on the basis of some of the things that we're doing right and some of the things that we're doing wrong. The research that he brought up, which was also brought up earlier in the day by James Cridland of Pod News, was that 91% of Australians have heard of a podcast. That seems pretty normal considering that the word podcast is splashed everywhere everywhere these days, and I'd imagine it'd probably be the same internationally as well. But there was a huge gap between the number of people that had heard of a podcast, over 90%, and the number of people who had actually listened to a podcast in the last month. It was around three-tenths, 33%. Um, I've seen some studies that have actually put it at lower, around the 23% mark. But that is a gigantic gap between people who know what a podcast is and people who actually know how to listen to one and do actively listen. And really, some of the challenge for you as a podcaster and people who create podcasts professionally is how do you get access to those people in the middle, that big chunk of people who obviously have heard the word podcast but have no idea how to get it into their ears. And so a lot of his presentation was around how to do that. And there was one really big takeaway that I wanted to share with you because I thought it was really interesting, very, very simple and something that can make a big difference, I think, when you're trying to educate new people. The thing that he talked about was this idea of moving to the word listen instead of subscribe. And some of the reasons that he said for doing this was that subscribe for people that don't listen to podcasts or don't know what a podcast is, sounds like something you have to pay for because everything in our life that we subscribe to, like Netflix or Spotify, always comes with a cost attached. The word subscribe is always associated with money coming out of your bank account. And if you are just starting to find podcasts and you're interested in listening to them, why would you click subscribe if every other experience you've had with the subscribe button has left you with less money than before you click the subscribe button. So actually encouraging people to listen, which is really what we're trying to do when we're asking people to subscribe. We're asking them to try and listen on a more regular basis. So when people subscribe to our show, obviously that's going to automatically populate their podcast app with our episodes. So the idea of them discovering each new episode is going to be a lot easier because it's immediately coming up into the app that they're accessing. But really all we want them to do is listen to those episodes And one of the other things he said that was by asking people to subscribe as a first sort of request, we're really asking somebody to marry us when we're on the first date. Really, we should get them to try our show, listen, see if they like it as they get more familiar with it, then move to subscribing so they catch those episodes on a more regular basis. So using the word listen instead of subscribe, I think is a really smart thing to do when you are trying to educate people about your podcast. The other thing in conjunction with this to do is often we'll say subscribe to our show in Apple Podcasts or Google Podcasts or Stitcher or wherever else we have our shows. But again, if you are a brand new listener, you don't really know what some of these things are. In fact, in the research, one of the main reasons that people gave for not listening to podcasts was that they didn't have the app on their phone uh, or they didn't have access to the app. And that's interesting because those apps come standard on phones. So that indicates that there's a big missing education piece there where people aren't quite sure how to access your show. So if we're encouraging people to subscribe by saying subscribe in Apple Podcasts and they don't even know that they've got that app on their phone, how are they ever going to find it? Instead, the suggestion was that we point people to a website. You'll notice that quite often on this show, I refer to my website, podschoolpodcast.com, and I put my show notes there and all of the information as well as links for how people can subscribe to the show in the different podcast apps. So he was suggesting that a website is a much better way to do that because if I don't know about podcasts and I've never used a podcast app, chances are I will know what a website is. I will know how to access a website. And if I have on that website the links 
clearly marked out of where I need to go if I'm listening on an Android or listening on an Apple phone, then it will be much easier for me to guide a path to the podcast app in my phone. A lot of people use the podcast badges, which are really good to use. You can get them from Apple or Google um, where it says subscribe on Apple Podcasts or subscribe on Google Podcasts. I think another thing if you're creating your own buttons that you can say is listen on an iPhone, listen on an Android. That's a really simple way for people who really are not sure about their podcast app or what it's called to know which button to click because they will know, oh, I have an Android phone or, oh, I have an iPhone. So think about how you can most simply encourage people to listen that might not have listened to a podcast before. If you are a regular podcast listener, if you are making your own podcast, I think it's easy sometimes to assume that everybody has the knowledge that you have. And because you find it quite simple to listen to a show and you don't really even give it much thought, it's easy to think that everybody has that kind of assumed knowledge and it must be easy for everybody. So it's really important that one of the things we don't forget to do is to educate our audience on how to find our show. And I think that suggestion from Adam is a really simple and effective one. Just saying, listen to my show at mywebsite.com. So I'd say listen to my show at podschoolpodcast.com. I have all of the episodes listed there on that website. You can click into them. I have embedded players there on that website. So you can listen to it on the page or underneath each of the players. I have subscribe in iTunes, subscribe on Stitcher, etc, etc. So just make that path to accessing your show a little bit easier and move away from the word subscribe. I think it makes a lot of sense. When I heard it, I was thinking, why have I not thought about that? That's right. We always associate subscribing to things with money. So if you're trying to remove barriers to entry for new people coming to your podcast, probably using language that doesn't scare the crap out of them because they think they're going to have to part with their hard-earned is a good start. So some great advice from Adam there, saying to your audience, listen to my show, pointing them to a website for your show and helping them find your podcast in case they haven't really found a podcast before. Of course, for the people who listen to your show who know all all about podcasting and how to download and subscribe and do all of that stuff, they can go into their app and find those things. So saying your website isn't going to be a problem for them at all um, because they'll already know how to find it. But really we want to access that audience that don't know and haven't had experience with podcasts before to try and encourage them to listen and make it really easy for them to work out how to do it. Hopefully that has given you a little interesting advice. I really found that super insightful and I'm definitely going to be using that in my podcasts as I move forward. If you've got any questions that you'd like answered on this show, please just head to podschoolpodcast.com and send me an email at the contact page. And if you need a little more help, you can head to podschool.com.au, my online podcasting course, where I take you step by step through all of the things you need to know to get your show into people's ears. And I will be adding that little piece of advice in the course because I think it is fantastic. I'll see you next week. And until then, happy podcasting. That's all for today. 